Hello to all my dear students. Today's video is brought to you by Science Excel. Please like and subscribe the channel by hitting the bell icon. So let's see what we are going to study today. Today's chapter is Nutrition in Plants, Class 7 uh, for CBSE Board. So we are going to mainly deal with the part 1 here, first part of the chapter. So let's see what is there, right? Okay. So all living organisms, you know, require certain basic life processes to survive. Okay. Some of them are, uh, you know, nutrition, uh, respiration, growth and reproduction. So these are basic life processes for us to survive. Now to perform these life processes, what do you think we need? Yes, we need to think, right? So what is it? It is actually energy. So I'll simply highlight the word here that is energy. So we need energy to produce all these life processes. Now there's another question. How do we get this energy? Have you ever thought of it? How do we get this energy? We get this energy because of food. Yes, the food that we eat actually gives us energy, right? Okay. Now, let us see what are the components of food that we know that is there, right? So, it is carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals. So, these are basic components. These constituents are actually making up whatever food that we eat, right? These are also called nutrients. Very, very important. These components of food are also called nutrients, right? Okay. Okay, now, do you ever wonder if plants eat or not? Because they are considered as living organisms, of course. Okay, how do they grow? And as we all know, the plants cannot move from one place to another. So how do they make food? So these are, you know, some of the questions that often come to our mind when we are actually learning about plants, right? Okay, next is nutrition. Now, what is the definition of nutrition? Nutrition it is the process of taking food by an organism and its utilization by the body. Very, very important word again is utilization, which I'm just going to highlight it so that it is easier for you people to remember. That is utilization. Simply, if I take my food in and I don't utilize it, if my body does not utilize it, it does not mean nutrition. Then it is only ingestion of food, just I'm taking the food in. But if my body is taking the food, and it is utilizing, then it is known as nutrition. Now here, when we are studying nutrition, there are two modes of nutrition in plants that we see. One is autotropic and the other one is heterotropic. Now first, let us see what is autotropic nutrition. Auto, let us break the word, okay? Auto means self. Trophos means feed or nutrition, to self-feed. So green plants are known as autotrophs because they can make their food from simple substances. What are the simple substances? Carbon dioxide, water, sunlight and chlorophyll. So these are the simple substances that is known as also the raw materials of photosynthesis okay so i'll just highlight this as raw materials so i repeat again green plants are known as autotrophs because they can make their own food they can feed themselves okay by these raw materials by these simple substances that is carbon dioxide water sunlight and chlorophyll. Now let us see how do they do this. Green plants make food by the process of photosynthesis. Photo means life. Synthesis is to generate, to make 
Okay, so here plants are making food in the presence of sunlight. The process by which the green plants make their own food pay importance to the word own. Okay, hence they are known as autotrophs for that reason. So they are making their own food from carbon dioxide and water by using solar energy and chlorophyll. Right? So this is the process of photosynthesis. This, uh, the next slide shows you the chemical equation of photosynthesis that is 6 carbon dioxide plus 12 water molecule in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll is giving us glucose, oxygen, 6 oxygen molecules and 6 molecules of water. Just for your information, the term photosynthesis was given by Dr. Charles Reed Burns in 1893 and the main site of photosynthesis is the leaf. Right? So here is actually the cooking of food takes place. That literally what we say, the plant is cooking food. The kitchen of the plant is said to be the leaf. Okay, now let us see an experiment that detects the presence of starch in leaf. Now, as you know that plants uh, produce glucose during the process of photosynthesis and that glucose is stored in the form of starch in leaves. So, we can detect the presence of starch in leaf by a simple experiment. What is this experiment? Uh, here you can see there's a setup that is being created. There's a, a beaker containing the boiling water. Okay, and inside the boiling water, a test tube is kept. And inside the test tube, we have a leaf and a methylated spirit being added into that test tube. Now, methylated spirit or alcohol. Now, why do you think we add this alcohol? This alcohol mainly bleaches the color of chlorophyll. The green color is bleached actually. So that when iodine is added, uh, we can see a clear blue-black coloration. That is the main purpose of alcohol here. Now, uh, what we know is that starch and iodine reacts and give us a blue-black coloration. So after some time what happens, the leaf is being taken uh, out from the test tube and few drops of iodine is added on uh, to that leaf. Now the leaf immediately turns to blue-black coloration because the leaf contains starch. So this proves that the leaf has starch and this proves that the plant has performed the process of photosynthesis, produced glucose which was converted to starch. So the leaf which does not have starch will not turn blue black rather it will take the brown color of the iodine so this test gives us the idea that how we can detect or test starch in leaf right okay now we move on to the next slide the next slide is telling me about the conditions we're just you know uh, recapping the conditions again we just recap the conditions that is sunlight chlorophyll carbon dioxide and water minerals that is needed for the process of photosynthesis and it is necessary and any of these uh, conditions or raw materials you can see if it is missing then photosynthesis will not be taking place that is something very very important that we need to keep in mind now the first experiment now as i said just now that all these four are important to carry out process of photosynthesis. So we are going to see that if I minus or if I remove any of these raw materials, will my photosynthesis take place or not? Right? So okay. So the first uh, experiment that is done is using sunlight. Okay. The first experiment is done to test the presence of sunlight is important or not for photosynthesis right so sunlight is the ultimate source of energy you know and photosynthesis cannot take place without sunlight so this particular word that it cannot take place cannot okay it cannot take place this is something important so let us see that why i am saying that it cannot take place so what experiment is done we have just taken here you can see here uh, a potted plant is uh, taken okay and in one of the leaf there's a black strip of paper which is uh, wrapped around okay uh, in that leaf okay the black paper is wrapped around with a clip uh, you, you can see the clip is there to attach uh, to hold the paper okay on the leaf and the setup is kept exactly outside in the sunlight okay to carry out the process of photosynthesis after a few hours the potted plant is removed and we are plucking that particular leaf which was wrapped with the black strip of paper after the leaf was plucked the leaf was you know tested for the presence of starch we carried out the starch test that we saw just in the previous slide that how starch test is done. We have done exactly the same thing. So the leaf was taken out. Okay, we removed the black paper strip. 
okay and few drops of iodine was added on that leaf now what do you think you will observe we will observe that the part that was covered with the black strip of paper did not receive sunlight because it was covered with the black strip of paper so that part will not turn blue black but the remaining part that is sticked okay in the uh, slide itself the green part which was exposed to sunlight have performed photosynthesis and it has produced starch and that starch reacted with iodine to give you the blue black coloration so this proof that sunlight is important so in spite of getting the other three raw material that means the chlorophyll was there carbon dioxide was there okay water and minerals was there everything was there but just because that particular strip of uh, leaf did not receive sunlight it could not perform photosynthesis so this proves that sunlight is very very important raw material for photosynthesis to take place okay in the next slide we move on to another experiment that is to prove that chlorophyll is important okay now what is chlorophyll chlorophyll is a green pigment which is present in chloroplast of leaves chloroplast is a plastid which is present in plants okay it contains the green pigment chlorophyll now why is chlorophyll so important what is the main role or function of chlorophyll the main role or function of chlorophyll is to trap the solar energy so the chlorophyll is absorbing the solar energy and it is converting that solar energy into chemical energy okay now here also an experiment was performed we have taken a variegated leaves now variegated leaves means the leaf which has you know patches of green and non green okay yellowish uh, type of uh, tinges the yellowish uh, uh, color whitish color and a part portion of green just like a money plant leaves i think all of you uh, must have seen money plant uh, okay leaves it is like in patches okay green and white yellow patches so here this is taken because some portion is obviously green containing chlorophyll and some is non green so here the same uh, thing was done the plant was kept outside okay and it was allowed to perform the process of photosynthesis after a few hours the plant was taken back it was brought inside and the leaf was plucked and test was done okay so we observe that the part which was green in color of course performed photosynthesis and produced starch so on iodine test it gave me the blue black coloration whereas the non green plant the yellowish plant remained as it is because it did not have chlorophyll so it could not make photosynthesis and there was no production of starch so this again proves that the plant got sunlight the plant got carbon dioxide the plant got water and minerals but since it did not have proper chlorophyll in proper part of the leaf the entire leaf okay did not turn blue black so this again proves that chlorophyll is equally important for the process of photosynthesis to take place okay now the next experiment is to prove that carbon dioxide is equally important again for the process of photosynthesis to take place okay now how do you think carbon dioxide uh, is actually taken in from the air okay plants they don't have nostrils like us okay so how do you think carbon dioxide is taken in from the air it is taken in from the air through stomata stomata are tiny minute pore like structures which are present generally in abundance okay on the lower surface of the leaf they are surrounded by two guard cells you can see the guard cells here they are bean shaped structure so the one that i'm picking off is the guard cells okay like this a bean shaped structure and this guard cells is actually regulating the opening and closing of the stomata so when the guard cells are open we say the stomata is open and when the guard cells close okay so is the guard cells open and the guard cells close so we say the stomata is closed now here to perform this experiment of carbon dioxide we have taken two setups okay you can see there are two setups a and b marked okay with two bell jars okay and there are two potted plants kept inside uh, two bell jars okay the bell jar a have koh it consists of a watch glass a small plate like structure okay and it contains koh potassium hydroxide potassium hydroxide mainly absorbs carbon dioxide and setup b is just as a control a comparing apparatus that is being kept okay so that you can compare the results okay and both of these setup is kept outside in the sunlight so that they can carry out photosynthesis 
After some time, what happened? A leaf from Beljar A, which contained, uh, you know, KOH, was plucked, okay? And a leaf from Beljar B was also plucked. Again, what do you think? You, you will observe. We will see that the leaf that was plucked from Beljar A containing, okay, inside Beljar A, okay, will not turn blue-black. And the leaf uh, that is there in Beljar B will turn blue-black. Now, why do you think so? Because we know in the previous uh, starting of the slide, I've told you that KOH absorbs carbon dioxide. So that particular leaf, which was in bell jar A, did not receive any kind of carbon dioxide. Though it received sunlight, though it received, uh, you know, uh, water and minerals, it, uh, okay, it, it, it had chlorophyll, of course. Everything was there, but since carbon dioxide was not there, okay, the carbon dioxide was missing, that particular leaf could not perform photosynthesis and hence it did not produce any starch and hence after doing the iodine test, I did not get in any blue-black coloration. But what happened in Beljar B? The leaf in Beljar B received everything. It received a carbon dioxide, it was exposed to sunlight, it had chlorophyll and it received water and minerals, of course. So it, it had all the four ingredients, all the four raw materials, so it could perform photosynthesis and therefore starch was produced. And iodine test gave me a blue-black coloration indicating that starch was produced. So this again proves that carbon dioxide is also equally important raw material for photosynthesis. Next uh, part, that is water and minerals, another important raw materials. Now, how do you think water and mi minerals actually reach the plant body? There are roots which are present, okay? They absorb the water and minerals, okay, which are dissolved in the soil by the root hairs. So, there are tiny extensions, tiny hair-like structures are present known as the root hairs. They absorb the water and minerals from the soil. Okay. And after absorbing, they are transported. They are conducted upwards through a particular tissue known as xylem. So, this is something that you need to remember that xylem is a tissue that is carrying water and minerals from the soil via root to the upper part of the plant. So, uh, this is all about the overall, you know, uh, part one of the lesson consisting of the definition of nutrition, the importance of uh, nutrition, photosynthesis definition, what are the raw materials that we need for photosynthesis, how it is carried out, okay, and the importance of these raw materials. So, I hope you have understood. Uh, please, you can uh, write in the comment section if you have any queries or doubt. For today, thank you and all the best.